Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us in the Film and Pen and Present screening room. I'm Brian Sheehan, our Senior Manager of Industry Relations. So glad that you could join us for watching all eight episodes of Hulu's No Man's Land. Uh, we are happy to bring you this special pre-recorded Q&A conversation with the creative team and cast. First, before we get started, just a few thank yous. Uh, thank you to our lead sponsor, the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. Uh, they have been a sponsor of this program for many years, and uh, without their support, Film Independent would not be here. Also, thank you to Vision Media, our screening partner, and to our media partner, the Los Angeles Times. And it is my pleasure to welcome our guest moderator, Lorraine Ali from the Los Angeles Times. Thank you, and thank you all for being here. Um, today, we are going to talk about the excellent uh, No Man's Land. And with me today are EPs Maria Feldman and Amit Cohen. We also have actors Felix Moate, Suhaila, like, oh, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna screw your name up, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Suhaila Yacoub, don't, don't worry. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, today I have EPs Maria Feldman and Amit Cohen, and actors Felix Moate, Suhaila Yacoub, and James Krishna Floyd. Thank you so much for being here. Um, Thank you. I, don't have, I just wanna jump right in, because there's so much to talk about here. So I wanted to start with you, Maria and Amit. This is such an ambitious um, series that crosses so many borders, languages, political issues, but also there's like espionage here. There's so much here. Why? Why do this? Like, what was the impetus for doing this? What was your inspiration for doing this? Because it certainly had to have been challenging to pull all this together. Maria, you want to start? Um, yes, well, we, first of all, we are four co-creators, and I think this is one of the reasons that this story got so full and, uh, and rich. Uh, it started with me wanting to do a series about Kurdish female fighters uh, of YPJ. I discovered a few years ago this amazing phenomenon of uh, Kurdish women being totally equal in this part of the world, in this military organization. And, um, and so then uh, my co-creator, Ethan Mansouri, brought another side to the story of uh, the three British friends coming <clears throat> to join ISIS. And then when Amit and Ron joined, so it became even fuller with the Mossad connection and the espionage story and geopolitics. So that's how it started. We wanted Ron and I uh, writing partners for many years, and we knew that, and we were journalists in, in Israel. We covered the, the, the conflict, the Middle East conflict, including the events in Syria as, as journalists. And we knew that at some point we will, we will want to, to deal with it dramatically. And we were fascinated by the journey, by the fact that, you know, the world is so globalized on one hand, but on the other hand, it's, it's so easy. You just take a plane and suddenly you're, you're in a different world. And we knew that we wanted to deal with it. And when Maria approached us with, with the fascinating idea of, of the female fathers, which felt like such a unique story, everything suddenly connected. And we all, I think, knew that we can take something that is, like you said, layered and, and complicated and had, had so many aspects and tell it through the, eye, through the eyes of, of ordinary people who, who, know, who's, who are making a journey from their places, from their hometowns, into this war-torn um, war -torn, torn country. And we knew we wanted to tell a, a geopolitical story, like a, such, a, such an enormous strategy through the eyes of, of ordinary people. And since then, it was, I think it was a very challenging, but very, it was a fun project, right, Maria? I know, discovering it, all, all the layers of it. Yeah. And like you're saying, I, I think because in this region, and you demonstrate this really well, there's a ripple effect from everything, right? And there's so many conflicts going on and so much going on. And I think this is demonstrated really well, e even in the first episode, I think it was where it's like, you know, there, he wants to, um, uh, Antoine wants to come in and he's, you know, coming in from Turkey and he's like steps over one little line in whatever that was, that mm -hmm. uh, kind of refugee camp. And it's like, oh, boom, you're in Syria. Yeah. You know, and it's just like, I, I just thought that was kind of a brilliant scene of, you know, pulling that all together. Um, Felix, I was just wondering for you, you know, what was it about this character that kind of pulled you in? Um, 
he's really, he goes through a lot. Let's just put it like that. Yeah, no, that's true. Um, um, the thing I could identify the most with uh, Antoine was um, the fact that he was um, totally led by, by his obsession. He was, um, he, has the he had the conviction and the obsession that his sister wasn't dead. And uh, some, somewhere I could identify with that, with this, um, with this aspect of the character. But it's true that I don't have his, um, how could I say, his braveness. Uh, I mean, um, he, he goes there without knowing the dangers um, that, he's, uh, that, he's gonna, um, that he's going to face. And um, I like the fact that he was completely obsessed by his conviction. So that was funny for an actor to play. And also, I think uh, the, the, time is, the time has come to show to the world that uh, uh, those uh, fighters uh, have completely defeated uh, ISIS. And we have to thank them for that because uh, the international community has totally forgotten about them now. Right, I mean, they were, um, and I remember seeing documentaries on them and reading stories on them. And they were such a force. Um, and it just, there was some kind of poetic justice that ISIS had been defeated by women. And that, by women. And, I, and I think Maria, you kind of got to that idea of it, of like, there, you, you couldn't make that up. That was just like such a, such beautiful kind of justice from the universe. <laughs> yeah, it, it, like, you know, what, what sparked the idea of making this show is this scene I watched in the news report of these two young uh, women uh, in Syria wearing uh, camouflage clothes and one was shooting and another one was standing next to her and sounding this ear shrieking noise like -li 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 -li. and then they explained that the reason they're doing it, they want ISIS men to know that women are shooting at them because ISIS soldiers believe that it's good for them to die, die in a the battle, they will go to heaven and get 72 virgins unless they're killed by a woman. Then there is no heaven and no virgins and you're simply dead. And that's why when they know that women are shooting at them, uh, they freak out. Sometimes they just drop their weapons and uh, run away. And I thought this is like, uh, you know, almost Freudian uh, mm -hmm. thing. Like they're so like this horrible ISIS that we were all scared for. They are scared of these young girls with colorful red scars, head scars. Of these women kicking their ass, basically, which is so yeah. great. <laughs> mm. And they were on the field. Fascinating to find, you know, feminism in, in, in the least expected place, in, in the least expected timing during, during a civil war. Suddenly you see gender equality and this gender equality is completely, dif completely different than the one we're used to in, in the West. And, you know, we live here and we live in, in free societies and we got used to the fact that feminism is here. I mean, the, or the fight for gender equality is here, but it's not like that. It's not necessarily like that. And in Syria, it, it is done, but in, in a completely different manner. And we wanted, you know, to challenge the audience, to, uh, to challenge the, 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 the viewers, to let them see it and ask, let them ask themselves, will I be able to do it? Will I be able? Because there's so much to sacrifice in order to achieve this gender equality. You know, you're not allowed to have relationships. You're not allowed to have kids for, for men and women. Um, so it, it was, it felt like uh, something, like a unique voice that we haven't seen on screen. And um, so yeah, let me just ask you because um, you play you play one of these fighters. So, <laughs> what kind of sort of research did you have to do to get into that role? Number one, and the number two is kind of a great responsibility with playing that. Was it? Did that feel kind of overwhelming, or was it a challenge, or what? How did you feel about it? Um, well, for me, it was an honor, honestly, but it, I had a lot of pressure because um, I wanted to make them justice. I wanted to be right for them. And I did a lot of research. I saw a lot of documentaries and I had two coach, two Kurdish coach, no four. Mm -hmm. And I spent like three months um, always with them. And they're, 
it was not just not um, to learn Kurdish or to know the what is uh, in the in the what, what is large. I really jumped into this culture and I really try to understand how they behave, how they move, how, what they eat, what they drink. Um, and they're not badasses kicking asses. That is not um, completely true. They, they're, it's not an army, it's a protection unit. And they're not fighting and they're not proud to, to do for, uh, to kill ISIS. It's like a protection for them. And they have maybe more equality than even we have in France, I mean, the, the, the way they behave, the man with the woman, the woman with the man is something I really learned so much about them. And it was really an honor for me to, yeah, just to, to, do, the, to, to do one Kurdish fighter. I mean, it's, I want to, the world to know who they are and what they're doing, not for, it's not a, a civil war, it's an international war and what they're doing for us. And it's important to, to show the world. And yes, I... I yeah, I, I was stressed, but I worked a lot to make them justice. Yeah. Sorry for my English. It's been a long time. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great. Um, it's certainly better than my Arabic, so don't worry about it. Or I don't even speak English. So, um, James, I wanted to ask you, because your um, character comes in as essentially an ISIS recruit. You're coming from England. Um, I kind of looked at him as, as kind of like a Jihadi John character, but he's got this conflict. Um, he's complicated because he's got these kind of conflicting loyalties and he's also got a conscience about this, yet he's, here he is in ISIS. So like, how did you, how did you go into this character? In other words, research, how, like what, what did you have to do to embody that? Well, it's interesting that you say he's a bit like Jihadi John because I think um, when they first sent me the script, they, f they sent me only the first two episodes. So I actually, I turned it down and because I was like, I, I thought, yeah, he's just a Jihadi John type character. And as you'll all see, he's, he's, he's anything but, you know, by the end of the series. Um, and once they sent me all the scripts, it was one of the best scripts I've ever read. And um, a beautiful story that really told human stories and I think avoided the kind of overtly geopolitical debate that you either get directly or indirectly from a lot of series that are set in the Middle East. And that was very important to me. But yeah, to answer your question, I mean, what's very interesting about Nasser is that he's, he's not really interested in politics or, or a cause. Uh, yes, he is, uh, as far as we know, working for um, a British organization that seems to be the government uh, to essentially infiltrate ISIS and provide information and intel. But really what his journey is about is he is trying to save his friends from sleepwalking into a death cult. He's trying to save their lives. And that is something that we can all relate to. And that for me was the, was the emotional hook into the character. And in terms of research, you know, it's amazing living in London and just being a, you know, a young brown man, how many like degrees of separation I have to people um, that have done some pretty dodgy things uh, who have either attempted to go to Syria or uh, maybe have gone. And um, for, for legal reasons, I couldn't uh, meet people like that. Uh, at least um, I won't say that now on a public forum. Um, but what I, what I did do was spend a lot of time on the online forums. Uh, and again, uh, I, met, I met particularly one person who uh, did actually know how to get me um, a login and a password and and that was that was pretty nuts um, and what I found that was really interesting was that a lot of the guys that are on those forums they are so they have no idea about any sort of uh, certainly complex political <laughs> opinions on any of these matters that we're talking about I mean a lot of them probably couldn't even hold a conversation with with Amit or Maria or anyone Again, it's interesting. They go there in their mind for what they see is quite human reasons. They think it's a holy war. But actually, when you read through the lines, a lot of it is to do with them. You know what? I want, they want to have a, what they think is a better life. And uh, I think what you have to do when you play a character like that is A, not judge them. 
um, and B, find the human hook. And to be honest, you know, I, I don't think I've ever seen a character like Nasser before, you know? I mean, when, they, when this idea of a young British Muslim who is working for the British government as, in essence, a spy who infiltrates ISIS while trying to save his friends from dying in ISIS, just seemed to me such a beautiful premise that gave me so many different layers to, to play. And I think, you know, one of the tricky things about a character like that is too, is that as you're saying, well, there's all these kind of stereotypes that you often see in film or television, whether you're talking about the Middle East, the Muslim world, Arabs, war, whatever it is. Um, he is trotting on all of that. Really, a lot of this is treading on all of that. And, you know, as you know, that's such a, I think it's really tricky to do without falling into those traps, yeah. right? Um, so, and I guess this is for, you know, all of you, but particularly James, Maria, um, it, like what, what did you have to do to try and um, get around that? Do you see, not get around it, but it, that's, it's just a tricky tightrope walk as far as I see, because you're going to catch flack from a bunch of different sides, no matter what you do. You're not telling our story right. You're not telling that story right. How do you do this and, and keep your artistic integrity? I mean, it's really difficult. First, um, you know, I, I sat with, um, before doing what I did now, I, I sat with suicide bombers, with people who were already had the suicide, the explosive on, on their bodies and they were arrested. And the night before, men, women, sometimes teenagers. I sat with recruiters, with people who planned suicide bombings. Part of them were in, in prison and I was able, allow, allowed to interview them and some of them were at, at large. Um, and in, in so many cases, I mean, you try to find the rationale behind it. Uh, and what was scary and what was interesting is that you, you expect to find, you know, Hannibal Lecter, you expect to find someone who, who or, or someone who is so rad, radicalized and so uh, ideology driven. And at the end, you're sitting in front of of an ordinary person. You sit in front of a human being and they love their children and they do ordinary things and they eat and they, they have fun with their friends. And this dissonance the, the, what was, was really interesting to, to explore. And in so many times it becomes part, just part of your life. And there, is, there are some justifications, but sometimes it's, it's just something you do. And on the other hand, when you sit with the terrorist hunters, and we sat with these guys as well, we know these guys very, very well, well, with intelligence officers and military officers. And sometimes you see these guys and they are the good guys. They're supposed to, to thwart or, or stop this terrorist attack. But sometimes they're, they have their own role in, in pushing people to radicalization. This is something that can happen to to, to Nasser and the fact that we wanted to show who are the people we, that, that are working behind the scenes, the people that supposedly help us sleep better at night, but and we don't want to know how, how they, they do it. But that said, and it, this is something that is very confusing, because for, especially with, with Nasser and, and Suhaila's characters that feel so authentic. At the end, it's it's not a, a, a documentary and it's not a docudrama. It's 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 a drama. It's it's fiction, and the focus of the character is an emotional conflict. And just like James said, his character is driven by his by friendship. It's not a story about ISIS. It's it's a story about three childhood friends and what happens to their relationship in during crisis. So Hela's character is, is yes, she is a YPJ fighter, but we have someone who, who has like a nostalgia for something else. She, she, she lost her mother and she, she, she is torn between her duty and her dream. So I, I think once we, once we completed the research and once we knew what's the arena that we want to deal with, it was about dealing with characters. And I think No Man's Land, more than the, civil, the Syrian civil war, which is the backdrop, uh, is 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 um, it's 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 about it's about the emotional journeys of interesting characters like Antoine, like 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 Nasser, like like Saria. And um, where did you shoot this? Like, because you're you're all like, like the story is you know we're talking about France, England. Iran, Syria, Turkey. I mean, it's everywhere. So where did you shoot? It's all green. You want to say it? I say it's all green screen. We have, <laughs> we have, 
we'll see. No, he no. never left Los Angeles. <laughs> so the story takes place in six different countries. And uh, we shot all European countries in Belgium and in, in Paris. We shot Paris and Paris. And we shot all Middle Eastern countries in Morocco. And uh, it, yes, and it worked great. Morocco really had so many different landscapes. And uh, we did a lot of research. You know, it's coming from Israel. We know exactly how Syria looks and how this area looks. So it was amazing that we could find uh, really everything we were looking for there. But it was very demanding, right? Like doing, it, it, it took four months, Maria? You were there for four months? We were uh, filming, filming was five months and we were scouting and prepping for about six months before. And even before that, we went to some recce and scouting. We were all around Morocco, like uh, a lot of productions just go and shoot around Casablanca, around Marrakesh. We shot in the areas that some Moroccans like don't know exist. So we were really looking to be as authentic as possible to the landscape we needed. So we were shooting all around Morocco. And um, one, of the thing, one of the things I really like about this too is that, and this is particularly for the performers, for the actors, is that you're going into these regions, right? How do I say this? You're not really getting the culture of the region. You're going into these regions with people who aren't from there, right? I mean, mostly, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got like the ISIS recruits, you've got, you know, the women, you've got the Americans coming in for this. So like Felix for, for your character, for Antoine, like, um, he's an outsider, yeah. but he's, and you were saying, you know, he's braver than you are, but he's actually, you do a really good job showing how terrified he is, really. Yeah, I mean, he's got this conviction to find her, but he's terrified, and he's in this place, he's a total fish out of water. Did you feel like when you're shooting over there, I mean, was it sort of like, did you have to put yourself in an idea of like, I am a fish out of water. I totally don't know what this is. I don't know. How did you do that? Um, it's true that my character doesn't know anything about um, about the the conflict, the, the this conflict. So when he arrives there, um, he doesn't know anything. So as an actor, I didn't have to do a lot of researches about uh, ISIS or the YPG fi um, uh, fighters. I just had to be as innocent as Antoine, uh, without knowing anything. So. Uh, I was just being afraid uh, with the situations. I mean, in the very first episode, when I'm, when I'm about to be sold to ISIS fighters, um, I'm not aware of the danger that they represent, but I'm just aware that some people with heavy Kalashnikovs want, <laughs> want, want to, to buy me, so I'm afraid of it. And... Um, um, how could I say? Um, I'm sorry, my English is quite um, in progress now. <laughs> Help me, my French comrade. No, but um, so, no, I, but sometimes what was really um, strange is that reality was, um, was, uh, nous rattrapait, comme on dit, nous, uh, was catching us. Yes. Uh, for example, there is a big scene with uh, some refugees in the show, and uh, we were actually living um, um, a true refugees crisis that we're still living now, and reality was stronger than the fiction. And we were really moved to, to shoot this scene because we, we were, reality was stronger than the fiction. It's what I wanted to say, but I'm really talkative, so I say with a lot of words what, what could be said in a few words. I, I would like to add, if, if we have time. Uh, so we, we, it, it's, it's challenging to, to do a show about, about, about the, the Syria, about the events in Syria, because we know yeah. that the, the audience comes with like some sort of knowledge and people are interested, they want to hear more, but at the same time, they, there might, might be some pushback because people, you know, it's immediately associate, associated with beheadings and genocides and horrible things. Our way in to, to, to lure the audience, because we want the audience, not, not as a trick, because we want the audience to, to get 
to get the attention was to use Felix, to use Antoine as, as an avatar. And in a way, Antoine's, Antoine's character represents the audience. At first, he, he's invested only in one thing. He has only one personal agenda, to, to learn, to, to find something about his sister. And th at this point, we assume that the audience is mostly interested in, in, in this mystery. Is Anna alive, alive, or, alive or dead? And in order to do it, Antoine, he, he knows almost nothing about Syria. He knows that something happens there, bad things, but it, it doesn't concern him. It's, it's, not a, it's, it's not his concern at all. He has only one personal agenda. We wanted him to be dis disoriented. We wanted him to know as little as possible. We wanted him, we wanted him to be naive in a way, in, in, in the sense that, you know, it's very easy, easy for him to get in. But once he's there, it's very difficult to get out. And then he goes in into Syria, like, just like the audience, still concerned only about his sister, then concerned about his self-survival. And then at some point, in, perhaps in episode three or episode four, it's a gradual process, he looks around him and he says, okay, it's, it's bigger than me. It's, it's, bigger, it's bigger than my sister. There, there's a whole, a big, there's something horrible is happening here and I'm all part of it, can I leave? Uh, and we hope this is how the audience will feel. And about the other characters, you said we have so many internationals coming. Yes, so this was a major thing we wanted to explore. What makes someone go and fight someone else's war? And in a way, we looked as an inspiration, we looked at Hemingway's For Whom the Bell Tolls, you know, about this, the, the Spanish Civil War. And it's, it's, it's fascinating, I mean, to challenge the audience with, with this question, what will make you be involved in, 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 in a conflict that happens on, on the other side of the world? And allegedly, you look at these guys and say, okay, these are, they are the extremists. They are the crazy ones who go and fight on both sides. But it's more than that because they are, they are a metaphor. And you, you, at some point, they had, I mean, the way they look at it, it's not someone else's war, it's our war. The people who are fighting, the Americans who fight with the YPJ or the British who are fighting for ISIS, it's their war. It happens in Syria, but it's part of their war. And we wanted the audience to ask themselves, when something like that happens in Syria, is it our responsibility? Should we be involved? Should we ask our governments to be involved? Or should we say, oh, this is horrible, but I mean, we'll, we'll keep uh, doing our things and let them kill each other. We, we, there's nothing we can do. It, it, it's not our thing to, to deal with. Yeah, that's really interesting because it's like, it's almost like personal responsibility as a human being or what you feel your government should be doing. But then I think, one of the scenes that I thought was so amazing um, was, you know, as we're talking about, it's a great way to pull people into the story who might have burnout around the idea of like, oh my God, not ISIS, not the war, that stuff is so brutal. You're coming in with all these people from different regions who they can travel in with, right? But there's a scene where um, once the British guys come in and they, you know, come into the area that ISIS has occupied, they're in that home and um, I'm sorry for his name, but the, the one who plays your younger brother, James, he finds the piano. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he starts playing this piano and it's a shot from the back. And he's got the eye on everything and he's playing this piano and it's like part of his world over here, meeting part of his world over there the love and the conflict and that scene was just like, oh, you know, cause you're not supposed to be playing music. You're not, you know, it was against ISIS rules or whatever. That was an amazing scene. Not a question, just an observation, but God, that was great. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, no, no, sorry. no, no, no. But what I was going to say is that that's really interesting. You picked upon that scene because I think that's exactly what the whole team was trying to do. And that we were on board with is this idea of avoiding any sort of like, you know, opinion on the matter of the civil war in Syria. There are a million different social and political opinions on it, but we're not interested in that. As Amit said, we're telling a fictional TV series that is taking you on a human but thrilling journey. And that image and that scene is a very, very realistic, authentic scene for a multitude of reasons. The way it's shot, as you mentioned, and just the very facts of what's happening. And I think like that, that amazing kind of contradiction is, is a beautiful image that you've picked up on. This idea that the character that I play and that Joe Benayad and Dean Ridge play, these three best friends from Britain who are Muslims from West London, from a very working class background, who suddenly end up in Syria. It's this moment that makes them realize, oh, wait, um, I, I, I grew up around Western music my whole life, and now I can't play that. 
why you know is this worth it to lose all of the things that you grew up with and that you love and that you need just to fight someone else's war and what's interesting is that that seems like a conflict that most human beings can't relate to but actually what's brilliant about the writing and also what Oded the director did I think very very well and all of us as actors is that we made it about something very, very human and feral. And in the case of us three, it was simply, how do I stop my friends from dying? How do I save them? Because they are walking towards a car crash. That is a human basic thing that we can all believe in, we can all believe in and go with. And then that for me is one of the proudest things that I have about the show, aside from it being brilliantly made. I think what they've what, what we're all talking about here is this idea that are we just bored with TV series and films that are set in Syria during the Civil War? Well, what's brilliant, what we've done is, is we've depoliticized the whole thing and we've made it about a Frenchman who's trying to find his sister, you know, a YPJ fighter who's trying to, in essence, find herself, you know, and in my case, someone who's trying to save their friends from dying. And that, I think, is what makes our series really stand out. And then on top of it, because of Amit and Ron and everyone else's incredible research, I think you'll agree that there's an authenticity there that, again, we don't see much of. I mean, for example, it's in, what, four or five languages? You know? Six, six languages. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Maria. I suffered through all the translations. I was in charge of managing this. It was a nightmare. And we have to say, it's very, uh, we're really grateful to you and Arte for, for allowing us to do it. This, uh, because it, it's, it, it, it feels like the right thing to do, but it's not obvious because it's, again, very challenging to, 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 to accept, expect the audience to sit and watch something in six different languages. It's, it, so we really, really, really appreciate it. And um, this production, can you just explain a little bit about, because it's, is it a French, like, explain a little bit about, are we moving, in terms of, is this a French, American, British production, Israeli production, like, what, what would you say it is? No yeah. idea. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is it? <laughs> ISIS Kurdish production. This show <laughs> on every level. So if you just look at the producers of the show, so you have Israeli producers. I live in the U.S., so I consider myself an American now. We have uh, French co-producers. Uh, we have Fremantle from uh, London. We have Belgian co-production company. We have Moroccan uh, co-production company, and of course we have Hulu and Art. Uh, uh, French and American uh, uh, broadcasters, and now we have much more broadcasters ar around the world as the show is keep selling. Um, so yeah, you can't just say it's uh, French American Israeli. <laughs> it's like you will have to add more and more countries to the sentence. Um, and just my final question is, you know, I'm sorry if this is very broad, but who were you hoping? for this to reach or what are you hoping that the the outcome of this series is when people watch it what do you want them to pull from it wow <laughs> it's a tough it's question a question yeah i'd like joe biden to watch it <laughs> yeah <laughs> i want donald trump actually to watch it more than joe biden yeah yeah me too. yeah I'll yeah watch it he should watch it I think the audience, audiences, you know, people who, who are interested, the more let's, the more sophisticated, probably audience people, and mostly people who are interested in the genre, in espionage, terrorism. But we really hope that the unusual suspects will watch it. People who, who don't know about it, and they will give it a chance, and they will give it, the, you know, on Hulu. It, it will, uh, I think, Hulu releasing all the episodes at the same time, and it might be easier because you know. Um, some of the stories it takes you, you need some patience to to see the um, the special side of them just uh, like like james said with 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 nasser like or the, the scene that you you described the one with the piano it, it, we see it only in episode three and this is when you truly see the friendship of, of three british friends so we hope people who, who are usually don't watch this show not the home, homeland uh, americans uh, viewers 
we hope they will give it a chance and see the the human side of it and the emotional side of 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 this drama and hopefully they will learn more about the region not as a lecture not as a wikipedia not by reading something on wikipedia or watching uh, 60 minutes but uh, from you know from the visceral and emotional side of the story and it's true that um the show deals with a, a very a lot of serious subjects but it's mainly uh, and before everything it's a really thrilling show i mean it's yeah. about uh, spy war um it's i mean it's it's really uh, divertissant how to say it you know you can be um entertained it's really entertaining it's what i wanted to say yes and i i agree and i i think uh it's it's a tricky thing it's really hard to pull in such heavy subject matter and also make it entertaining and make it thrilling mm. and make it a mystery and also make it you know an espionage tale so you did that so congrats and thank you so much for talking to us um thank and you. congratulations on making a great series thank, thank you so much thank you so much thank you, thank you.